ever feel like the army's speaking a different language? Like, you need a decoder ring just to understand the basics. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see that. Well, today, we're cracking the code, diving deep into ADP-1. The Army's strategic playbook. Exactly. And trust me, we're ditching the jargon, pulling out the gold nuggets. Like, why does any of this even matter? What makes the Army tick in the 21st century? You know? It's about understanding the core principles, the why behind the what. What drives every mission, every deployment, every single decision the Army makes? And we're not messing around. We're diving right into the deep end, ready for a quote that'll make you think. Always. Hit me. Okay, here goes. You don't dictate end states from the air. You can't yeah. control territory. You can't influence people. That will take a ground force. Wow. That's Air Force Chief of Staff General Mark A. Walsh III, by the way. Seriously. An Air Force general said that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fascinating because he's highlighting this crucial point the unique role of land power, boots on the ground. Because as much as drones and air power are important. Critical, sure, but they can't do everything alone. It's like that saying, right? You might win battles from the air, but you win wars by holding the ground. A hundred percent. And that takes us back to some hard lessons from history. I mean, look at the early days of World War II, or even the Korean War. Oof, yeah. Those were wake up calls, big time. What happens when we're caught off guard? when we're not ready. Not good. Not good at all. And that's what ADP-1 is really stressing. Readiness isn't just some abstract idea. It's life or death. It's the difference between victory and defeat. And most importantly, it's about saving lives, which is why the Army's mission, it's so much bigger than just combat, right? 100%. It's about shaping the entire international landscape. It's about yeah. deterring threats before they even become a thing right. and being there when disaster strikes. America's first responders. Exactly. The Army is like this multi-tool of national power. Yeah, we fight when we have to, but we also prevent. We stabilize. We build partnerships. Influence, security, it all comes back to people in the end. It always comes back to the human element. Speaking of which, there's this super powerful quote in ADP-1. It's from Rear Admiral J.C. Wiley. The ultimate determinant in war is a man on the scene with a gun he is the final power in war. That's a powerful statement. It really makes you think. It is, and it's still true today. Wiley's saying that even with all our fancy technology or drones, it still comes down to the soldier on the ground. Their courage, their judgment, that's what decides the fight. That's a lot of responsibility. No kidding. It makes you realize you're part of something so much bigger than just yourself. This legacy of service and sacrifice going back centuries. Wow. And ADP-1 really emphasizes that legacy. Your service, right here, right now, it's all part of that chain. Duty, honor, selfless service, that's the bedrock of being a soldier. Okay, so we've talked about the weight of this legacy, this mission. But let's get a little more practical. How does something as massive as the Army actually work? Like, how do all the pieces fit together? That's where ADP-1 introduces this idea of the total Army. And it's more than just a cool name, right? It's about recognizing the combined strength of the active duty, the National Guard, and the reserves, all working towards that same goal. So like a three-legged stool, you need all three for it to work. Exactly. Each leg is vital, but each one also brings something different to the table. Like the National Guard always stands out to me. They've got that dual role, answering the call for state missions and federal missions. Yeah, they're always there for natural disasters, civil unrest, like right here at home. Absolutely, on the front lines in our communities. But then they're also ready to deploy overseas alongside active duty. Talk about a demanding job. No kidding. It really is unique. And of course, we can't forget about the Army Civilian Corps. Absolutely not. ADP-1 really stresses how important they are. And for good reason. I mean, they provide that continuity, that deep expertise that keeps the Army running, even in a deployed environment. Whether it's logistics or engineering, research. It's essential. Yeah. It's absolutely essential to the mission. A true team effort. Okay, so we got all the players. But what about the playing field itself? ADP-1 paints this picture of a modern battlefield that's, well, it's more complex than ever, right? Oh, yeah. This isn't your grandfather's battlefield, that's for sure. Today's land domain, it's about understanding cultures, ideologies, as much as it is about terrain. So it's not just about where the enemy is, but who they are, what they believe. Exactly. Think about it. You're deployed to a region. It's got all this history, right? Uh, Ethnic tensions, religious divides. That's the human terrain. And understanding it, navigating it, that's just as critical as any weapon system. It's like navigating a minefield, except the mines are, well, 
misinformation, cultural misunderstanding. Missing alliances, you've got it. And that's where those, I don't know, it seems like those small security cooperation missions come in, the training exercises with partner nations. Those become absolutely critical. Because you're building relationships, bonds, and that can prevent conflict before it even starts. You got it. That's a huge part of what ADP-1 calls shaping the operational environment. It's not just reacting to crises, it's getting ahead of them, building a more stable world through partnership. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But let's be real. Sometimes, conflict, it's unavoidable. It happens. And ADP-1 doesn't shy away from that. Talks about being ready to win. To win big, when it matters. Large-scale combat operations. And it really drives home this point, 21st century threats. They require a new way of fighting. Like what? Give me some examples. We're talking cyber warfare, disinformation campaigns, enemies blended in with civilians. It's a battlefield where the lines are blurry. You've got to be able to adapt. It's not just about who has the most tanks anymore. No. It's about brain power, agility. Yeah. You got it. ADP-1 recognizes that firepower without strategy, it's like a hammer without a carpenter. You can make noise, but you're not building anything that lasts. You're just making a mess. And this is where I love how ADP-1 talks about combined arms, bringing all the pieces together. Because that's how the army's strong. Being able to use land, air, space, even cyber capabilities, all working together. Teamwork makes the dream work, right. Right, but it's also about the specialized units too, like special operations. Oh, right. They bring their own unique skills to the fight. The tip of the spear. Oh. High stakes, missions, cultural awareness, you name it. But what's really interesting is how ADP-1 brings it all back around. Even those specialized units, they're part of this bigger picture. Unified land operations, they call it. Okay, I'm going to be honest. That's one term I always trip over. Unified land operations. What does it even mean? So unified land operations, it sounds kind of complex. It's really not once you break it down. It's all about how the army adapts. You've got offensive operations, taking the fight to the enemy. Okay. You've got defensive, holding the line, and then, of course, stability operations, rebuilding after a conflict, winning the peace. Right, right. Unified land operations means all those things are connected. They work together. So you got to be able to switch between them, like seamlessly. Exactly. Like a chameleon. Because on a modern battlefield, things can change in a heartbeat, right? Deloitte. One minute you're delivering aid, the next you're repelling an attack. You've got to be ready for anything. And that makes me think about another term from ADP-1, Mission Command. It feels like that's really at the core of how the Army operates, wouldn't you say? 100%. Mission Command is all about empowering those leaders on the ground, letting them make decisions when it matters most. Because things rarely go according to plan, right? right? You have to be able to adapt to overcome those unexpected challenges. So it's not about some general micromanaging every little detail from miles away. No way. It's about communicating the goal, the why behind the mission, and then trusting those closest to the action to make the best call, using their judgment, their instincts. Because no plan survives contact with the enemy. Exactly. Even back in the Civil War, they knew that. ADP-1 actually talks about that. Think about it. Back then, communication was rough, right? Battles were chaotic. Those leaders on the ground, they had to be able to make decisions on the fly adapt to what they were seeing. It was all about improvisation. In a lot of ways, it's the same today. Even with all our fancy tech, it still comes down to human judgment, trusting the soldier on the ground. Wow. So we've talked about where the Army's been, where it is now. Hmm. What about the future? What does ADP-1 say about where we're headed? That's where Vision 2028 comes in. The roadmap, right? Exactly. And it boils down to five main things. Manning the force with top-notch people, organizing effectively, modernizing equipment and training. Got to stay ahead of the curve. Absolutely. And this is a big one, cultivating strong leaders. Leaders who can adapt. So it's not just about having the coolest weapons. It's about the people. ADP-1 makes that crystal clear. The Army's greatest strength, it's, it's people. The human element, again. Always. So that means taking care of soldiers, yeah. DA civilians, families, building a culture of support, of respect. Because a strong army starts with a strong foundation. 100%. Trained and equipped, for sure. But also well-led and well-supported. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> well, we've covered a ton of ground here today, broken down some big ideas from ADP-1. So as we wrap up here, what's the one thing you want our listeners to remember? ADP-1, it's not just a book on a shelf. It's a living document. It's a guide to navigating this complex world we're in. But it only works if we make it work. So it's up to every single soldier right. Right, to take these ideas, make them real. It's about understanding your place in this whole thing, knowing that the decisions you make, big or small, 
they matter. They have a ripple effect. Like the future of the army. It's not some pre-written script. It's being written right now, every single day, by every soldier, every DA civilian. It's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thought to end on. So keep learning, keep leading, and never be afraid to ask why. That's how we take ADP1 from page to reality. Until next time.